Good evening! We're back! We're slightly, back slightly later than planned. Um, the alpha for the game I'm making came out two, well, what was it, about ten days after we had originally uh, scheduled it to? So everything got pushed back a couple of weeks, but lovely to have you here. Oh, there's plenty of familiar faces in Jesus. That's also so good evening. Awesome. To uh, Bremen's bug number 13, Jace Elevator Simulator L4T, Infinisil, Mfiano, um... Ah, Prima, Skinny Seahorse, Telepool, and Virko Proz. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Everything. Uh, happy Christmas. All the ones we've missed since we've been off for fucking ages. Um, but we are actually black, back to put... Not with words. I'm back, but all the words are still gone. Um, nothing's changed. But we're back to push some pixels with the old Perens and stuff. R548, hello. And yes, hello to anyone I have missed um, that Twitch wasn't telling me. He's not there. So, um, good to see you all. Let's start on some things. Right, so tonight we're going to try and prototype something actually for the game I'm working on. So, for those of you I haven't rambled at before, um, let's see if there's a half-decent screenshot of these things. Um, so, I work on a game called Tailspire. It's a um, system for kind of like pen and paper role-playing games, uh, but you can build either communally or just as a single person all these boards, and then you can place creatures in them, assign them to other players, and play together over the internet and all that kind of jazz. It's very cool, um, but we have a bug, and it was originally reported, I believe, by Blapo, um, who is a member of our community, um, thank you for all the AVOK -okay from various people. Thanks, Median and Darius, for that. Yeah, Point of Pimps away today. That's a shame. Um, the bug we were seeing where there were cases where, uh, from the GM mode, so the Game Master mode, where you can see everything, you can see that there's a creature over here. But when we switch to player mode, which only lets you see things from, the play from that creature's point of view, um, that creature is no longer visible. And there are two systems that come into play here. There's a fog of war system that basically tries to walk. It simulates walking everywhere that that creature could reach. Uh, so it's essentially a flood fill that can climb stairs and drop through holes and things like this. Um, and it shows all of those tiles. And then it also has a line of sight system which uses ray casts to find out what this guy could see in all directions. So it assumes you can turn your head and look around and things like that. It assumes the creature can rotate. But then it just tries to show everything that's in line of sight. So why is this chap not appearing? So I rebuilt a crude version um, of the scene. And was seeing that um, it looked at first like it was these tables that were the issue. But when I started debugging the rays... Uh, it became pretty obvious that the actual problem was it was hitting on the corner of this scenery here. So this is that scene again. And here we can see that green point there is where the ray is hitting. So what I started doing was um, it was more of a clutch. Um, and that was rather than obviously just firing one. Uh, we were using a sphere cast before, just a single one. Um, I started using multiple rays. One from kind of either side of um, the creature just by a small way and then going out to a slightly wider position um, on the target, so from the source to the target. These ones are parallel but it changed over time. Um, also to handle cases where you have one creature higher than the other, um, you might only be able to see their legs. So it casts up to four rays. The, the primary one from center, from head to head, um, then two slightly from the left and the right of the head of the source creature to left and right of the target creature, and then one from the head of the source creature down to near the base of the tile, so down here essentially. Um, by doing that, it seems we have a duplicate one here, um, by doing that we got slightly better results, things like peeking around corners worked and things like this, but it's still pretty much a clutch, and I don't like it. And what I'd really like is to know exactly what this guy could see from the position it's currently in. Um, and one way to do that would be to render the scene um, actually in all directions and then actually look to see what other creatures are in that scene. So that's what I want to prototype today. And so let's get the doodle device, which has rested for too long, um, back and we'll do a rough 
idea. So what I'd like to do is create a cube map. So here's our cube map, da da da, -da. and it's going to be we're going to render from wherever. So if we got our little person here, which I really should have done in another color. So there we go, green. Blah blah blah. Da da. Here's our creature, and we're going to render from their position in all directions. So we'll get a cube map and we'll render the scene six times, and we'll do like a, essentially a frost them. So we'll do like ninety degrees. So this whole area here will be rendered onto the face back here. And then this one here will be rendered into this face here. And that should give us the full 360. And then what we're going to have to do is find a way to detect who's in that scene. So the way I'm thinking about doing it is we'll render all of the scenery, like all of, all of everything here. We're going to render this stuff black. And then we'll render each creature in a different color. And for now, we'll just use shades of red because that gives us 255 um, colors we can read for our um, if we're just using an R8. And then I think what we do, so we do in the first pass where we render to those six textures. And then we do an accumulation pass where we take all of those and we use the ID, like the color, as an index into an SS, uh, yeah, into an SSBO. And we should store an array there. And all we have to do is say true. And that means this one is in the scene. So each creature is going to have to have an ID. We'll do this in a slightly smarter way in the actual game. But um, that's roughly what I want to do. Did that make some sense? If it did, I'll carry on. If it didn't, I'll probably carry on anyway. But I would like to hear. Uh, just in case there's something I can explain. It has been a long time since we have messed around with some lists. So I... This is actually the first time I've been using Keppel properly again since we last did <laughs> back in December sometime. Um, I started adding another feature. Um, so uh, the I think textures have a an isotrophy um, support. I think that's what it was. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, samplers. Yeah. So samplers can have this setting. So it was just some small tweaks. Um, to make that available. Um, where is it? And I wrote some documentation for it. It's a very simple feature, but it's just an extra thing that can be specified when you're making samplers. Um, and it's in GL, so we wanted support of it. So I did that last week, um, but I was on a different machine, so I could only kind of go by the spec. So that hasn't been merged in yet, because it's still testing. Um, and yes. So I've, I've done a little bit of a uh, little bit of Lisp coding. Um, I have done nothing with proper properly with Keppel yet, except before an hour that, before the stream, I uh, just tried to trim down the code so we had something we could base this from. Um, Metian, an isotrophy. There's a pull request. No H. What? Thank you. <laughs> an isotrophy. See, that's when I, when I say it wrong, that is going to be a problem. Nice. Thank you very much. I will get that in ASAP and uh, I'll get that tested as well. That's that's the only reason it hasn't gone into master yet. So it's actually good that you caught that before I did. Awesome. Right, I need some coffee. So I've got a silly coffee drink here. And then, may as well just start creating that um, cube map. And see where we go. Big number 13, gee, that looks cool. Thank you, sir. Um, we are going to be, yeah, it's a... Uh, I wish I could show you on here. Apparently it does run on Linux. A couple of people have been using it through Wine, but I haven't got that set up right now, so I don't. I can't show you any more um, than these screenshots. Um, Darius is saying, so on the second pass you want to iterate all of the pixels fragments in the sixth size to figure out what it's visible. Yeah, but because we, we can do that all in parallel because it's going to be done in the fragment shader. Um, we could also do it with compute, but it's going to be just as easy to do it in fragment. And Fiano says, I just spent all day yesterday trying to debug why my game wasn't working on one of my machines. Forgot to clone Vario to my local projects for the recent dish con commit. Oh, damn, has that not gone out public yet? Who oh, does? I will need to fix that too. <laughs> also, M. Fiano, I'm thinking about adding support for specifying locations um, for at least uniforms in Vario. Would this be helpful to you in any way? Um, I, I should also probably do it for the other inputs as well, just the input variables, but 
thoughts, comments are welcome. Um, let's have a look. Right, so let's see how the hell do we make a cube map texture. So, initial contents are going to be nil because we're going to render into this guy. The dimensions, let's just do 512 by 512. What's really nice in this setup is that on each of the clients, so in each of the um, instances of the game on different machines, there's only one selected creature at a time, and that's the only one you need to know line of sight information for, which is really cool. Um, so it means that we can actually do something very expensive or relatively expensive um, for this line of sight thing, which is why I think this cube map texture thing will be fine. So cubes seems to be the argument. T. Oh yeah, we're going to need an element type as well. So element type um, uint8. Cool. That seems to be the way to make one of those. Right. Let's do this. Um, Now, what do I want to do? So this is a line of sight um, scene, we're going to call it. I'm going to make a class for this. Class scene. And we're going to have an FBO, because uh, we're going to have to render into this cube map. So we need an FBO. Um, it's going to be interesting, actually, because we're going to have to do this in a number of passes. Um, so I think it's going to be FBOs, isn't it? We're going to have multiple FBOs. And yeah, so let's do that. We're going to need samplers, I think. Maybe we can actually do all of the sides in one go. Because if we draw a quad and we use that as a, a if it's like a, yeah, 512 by, yeah, a quad that takes up the whole screen and we say that our viewport is 512 by 512. That will give us one fragment call um, at each of those positions across 512, 512. And then we can index into each of the um, sides of the sample of the uh, of the of the cube texture. And we can do that with just one cube sampler. So I think we only need one sampler. And what else? Well, obviously, there's cube map itself. So the um, cube map. Doot, doot, doot. Trying to think if there's anything else. Probably not. Let's do this. Okay, so in it arg is this, and in its form is something. So well, we, this kind of. Is a sensible init form, I guess, for this guy. It gives us the texture. Um, the FBOs will be an array of. Actually, no. Let's let's not do this. We'll um. We'll just make a function for initializing this. So let's do make loss scene, and the reason is that we're going to want to get the sampler from the cube map. So. We need it to be able to reference that, and we can't just reference another field during init form. Um, and Fiona says, great, most definitely. It will take me a little while, because I think it's going to be a really fiddly fucker of a uh, feature. Because one of the things is, because we use structs, the, um, yeah, because we use structs to define layout, I don't know how we're going to specify the locations for the inner um, fields. Maybe we just set the location of the topmost one and it just sets it logically. Because why would you want it to be overlapping? Um, big bug number 13 say, Lisp is awesome. This project definitely proves it. Thank you, sir. It certainly proves what you, kind of mess you can make after a few years of just doing stuff. Um, let's have a look. So, scene is make instance yes of lost scene with slots no can we do that yeah because with slots will make uh, expands to with slot um, forms 
And as long as we set them before we get them, that should be okay. I'm just thinking if we try and access these, because they're going to be uninitialized to begin with. Let's see. Let's do C. Um, QMAP, FBOs, Sampler. Right. Oh, yeah, and the scene we've got is the same one from last time. Sponsor. Very, very basic shading. All stuff we've done on other streams um, will come to this eventually. So we're going to go set F cube map to be um, that make texture thing there, right there. That's perfect. And then we're going to. What's next? Da, 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 da. We're going to have FBOs. Oh, we can do sampler easily, can't we? We can do sampler, which is just going to be sample cube map. There we go. And then FBOs is going to be. Um, we're going to loop for I below 6 and then collect and what are we going to collect? We're going to collect an... Hmm. Just trying to remember how this works. So, make FBO so we attach images to this. So that should be fine. Let's just do Okay, so how, how's that going to work? We have to make a list where we can say in the, the first attachment, attachment zero, is um, the text ref, I think, of cube map. Let's just do this def var def the temp zero, um, and it's that texture. So temp zero is that, and then we're going to do text ref. Let's bring up temp zero again. Text ref temp zero and then cube face zero. Cool. So that gets us a single GPU array which is backed by a texture and it's got its dimensions and stuff like that. I think that's how we do this. <laughs> it's been so long. Like I could remember it properly when we were doing it all the time anyway. It's always been a mess. Let's just carry on. Um Well that's gross, but it works. Indentations changed slightly there, I think. Oh, or at least it's become more consistent anyway. Um, all right, so that gets us our FBOs, our sampler. Um, and, and our cube map set up. Cool, and then we got to return, obviously, the scene we just made. Let's just try it. Make last scene. Boom! There's no class. Oh yeah, we haven't compiled this yet. There we go. Okay, so now we have that. We have some FBOs. Oh yeah, we actually just made a list, didn't we? It would be kind of nice to make an array um, of those. We should also make a function for freeing this, and I will check the chat in just a second. So, actually, if we go... Um, free is a method, isn't it? Yeah, so we should just do def method free object is lost scene not o. At the very least, it's going to be obj. Right, what's going on over here? Dum 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 dum. Darius is saying, kind of off topic, but after the long pause, you said you wanted to pause the Patreon. Yes. The Patreon wasn't paused. Motherfucker. No, that's bullshit. I didn't want to take anyone's money while I wasn't producing content. That's fucking crap. Sorry, I'm going to check this out right now because that really sucks. I am really sorry. I know you're fine with it, but I'm actually really sorry that that, uh, that, that happened. Um, just going to log in. I, I'm, I'm doing it on the machine that is streaming. Like... Yeah, the machine that's actually doing the streaming is separate from this one where we're actually viewing all the stuff, so you won't see anything. Um, but I'm just going to grumble at you, directly at you for a little bit while I find out what's going on. What the hell? So... Yeah, they've been charged on January the 1st. Damn, okay. 
Right, then what I need to do is pause it for two months now, because that isn't right. Um, right, I, I will, so, sorry, rather than making you watch me just grumble at the screen, I will do that afterwards. Um, thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. That's really good to know. I could have sworn I'd done that, so that's really annoying. I'll put a message out as well, so other people not watching the stream will know. Um, cool. When learning play with Verts, it doesn't find Foo on episode 62 branch. Oh, that's rather odd, because I thought I deleted that. <laughs> Apparently there's a lot of things I think I've um, done that I haven't been doing. Right. It's not a very good commit message, but it'll do. Are we pushing? Yes, good. Right. Um, bug number 13, doesn't the exclamation mark imply setting slot values? Not that, oh no, not in a common lisp. I didn't know that's what Steam did, the uh, scheme did. That's really cool. Um, yeah, it was just at the time, I'd seen someone use it for like constructors and stuff. I, I don't know. I just, it's what I was thinking of at the time. So I used it. It's not my favorite anymore, but at least it's short. Yes, of course, there's, um... I saw. I remember that scheme had used a uh, question mark for predicates, and we use hyphen p. Um, Darius, no, don't you feel bad? That's 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 my cock up, and I, I actually want to turn it off. Keep your word and all that. It's it's simple stuff. Thanks, Maddie Yan. That is um, that is done. Bug number 13 say, I'm currently implementing a small um, RS, R5RS like language. So I was quite irritated when I saw the VPA. <laughs> cool. That's dope though. Oh man, we've got some projects to get back to as well, which is going to be really exciting. I won't talk about them right now, but um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Right, let's let's do free. Um, so we're going to do with slots. Let's just copy this. Okay, and then free cube map, um, free FBOs, sampler. That is not how you do this. Map nil, free FBOs. That should do it. Yeah, and then we'll return nil from here. And obj rather than scene. Ah, wrong button. All the wrong buttons. So now we should be able to do free this guy, and that's free. Good. Okay. Right. So we got that done. Um, now, now what do we want to do? Now I guess we need to start rendering into it. So we need to start looking at what we're going to do. So let's find, let's make some objects that are going to be our, um, our characters. So I think we're going to use just use these balls. This will be the easiest thing. We've probably got some stuff for that already. Um, so in here, where is ball? There we go. Um, and in the other file, actually, there must have been a make ball in here somewhere. There it is. So that was that one's position. So let's just try making another one. Um, at 15, there it is, cool, and remove that from the things list, and it should, oh yeah, that doesn't have side effects, there we go, cool, so that removes that, um, so that's good, those are going to be our characters, um, Or creatures, rather. So we're going to place those around, and then we're going to say one of them is current, and we're going to render it from its point of view. So I guess if we try and say that this one is the current creature, let's just have a look at things again. Um, well, the first thing in this list is the ball, so let's do that. First of that, and we're going to go and define a... Um, let's just do it here. Def bar 
current creature is nil. And then we'll set it down here. So let's do set f current creature is that ball. Nice. So now we've got Chris. Stop hitting all the wrong things. Play. And current creature is that ball. Cool. Just to be sure I haven't screwed up any state, I'm going to take that current creature and I'm going to get its position. And then I'm going to set its position to be 0, 15, 20. And it moved. Good. So that is the one we're talking about. Nice. So let's start trying to draw everything except itself from its position. Um, well, I guess we just need to do something very like the drawing we're doing now. Um, how does that work? Let's go back to our main file here, where we've got our main loop. Game step, here we are. Um, so we, we, ba we bind an FBO, and then we clear the FBO, and then we loop through all the things, and we draw them. Fine. That's going to be easy. So let's take that and start throwing around with it. I'm just getting told to push things. Right, one second, let's do that then. Uh, what have we done so far? Lost scene. Added, lost scene, and... Oops, current creature. <laughs> Bug number th 13 saying, How is the 3D scene stored, modeled... Is it based on expression markup language? No. This, these are, what the, I think it's an OBJ file that we're loading in via Asset, which is a an asset, an open source asset importer. Um, the data is then stored. That's a good question. Well, it's going. They're going to be stored in GPU arrays. Um, so let's go. Let's go and find that. So it's a good question. Um, that is interesting. So. This list of things are all the objects in the world, and this scene up is made of many objects. So let's just take the second of things and have a look at it. In here, we can see that there's a buffer stream, um, and this is a this is what we pass to a GPU pipeline to render stuff. Um, so this is a big old series of uh, vertices. So if I kick this over to the REPL, um, we can get the buffer stream uh, GPU arrays. And we can see that this is um, this is streaming over two arrays. There's this first one here, um, which has an element type of this. And then this one here, which has an element type of unsigned short. Now this is the index array, and this is the kind of primary uh, data array. So let's let's just go get that. Okay, uh, of that. Okay. So acid mesh. And actually, because it's interesting, let's just go and jump to the definition of that. You can see that um, acid mesh is a struct. Um, that has a position, a normal, a UVs, tangent, and bitangent, and it's a vector three, vector three, vector two, vector three. Now, probably, I'm, I'm guessing you're not. Um, th this is very much not plain list. This is um, all stuff that's inside the uh, the GPU arrays, and this form of defining struct is all inside Keppel, uh, which is a library I made for making GL kind of REPL friendly and rather lispy. Um, so this is very similar to a normal struct definition in Lisp, except that this works um, both CPU and GPU side, and it's used for foreign data. So when you allocate one of these, it's in unmanaged memory, and then you can push it up to the GPU and pull it from the GPU and things like that. Hey, kid, good to see you. Um, so then if we did a pull on this, um, it'll complain, because pull is not a function it knows about. Uh, five. There we go. 
Um, let's do pull g, which is the actual function I'm interested in. And you can see the data here, in this case, has been marshaled back into a list of uh, lists, where each one of these is um, the contents of one of these structs here. So you can see that this first vector 3 here would be the position. This would be the normal. This would be the UVs. This would be tangent and bitangent. And so with all that information, that's what we're um, that's what we're rendering over. And seeing as we're go going through some of this stuff, I'll just quickly pop over here because this will help when we jump over here soon. So what Keppel allows you to do is to define functions which have this hyphen G on the end. And that G means it's a GPU function. So this is all going to be cross-compiled over into GLSL. And whenever we modify one of these, it recompiles all the functions that use it. And also it recompiles pipelines. And pipelines are a chain of um, stages that your rendering goes through. So this is the normal kind of GL pipeline thing. We get to use uh, functions kind of serve double duty. They can either just behave like normal functions or they can be used as the stages uh, in the pipeline themselves. So here we're saying that the um, the GPU function thing vert stage, which takes um, one of these structs and one of these structs as a, from the stream, is going to be used as our vertex stage and frag stage, uh, which is up here. This is going to be used as our fragment stage. Um, and then we map over this. So if I go and find where this is used, um, oh, there was that. Um, you can see here that we map G, which is saying map on the GPU, over this pipeline, passing in this stream, and also this data. But this is going to data that's going to be uniform across the stream. Um, so yeah, that's how we do. That's how we do the the, the rendering stuff. And yeah, that's a super speedy version of kind of what Keppel is. What were we doing? Oh yeah, we were looking at some of that data and then we were, I can't remember. Does it matter? No. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got that current creature. That's what we wanted to do. And then we want to render this scene a whole bunch of times. Didn't we start writing a function? I thought we did over in play with verts maybe. Oh yes, here we are. Yes, we were going to start doing the rendering thing. So we're going to want to render the scene um, six times. Each time we want to be pointing the camera in a different direction. I think we should have another camera. What? No, not Vario. Um, camera. Actually, I'm going to set the directory here. So slime set default directory to, yeah, play with that. So that's correct. And, okay, so let's just make sure that things are what I'm expecting them to be. So let's see the equal, the current camera is equal to camera zero. Cool. That's good. And then we can use camera one. Oh, that's an older graphic camera. Let's just make another one. Camera two, it's a perspective camera. Um, and it's FOV. Why can't we configure that? That's stupid. In it, arc. FOV. Should be able to configure that when we create it. The FOV for this is going to be 90 because we're going to, yeah, we want to get 90 degrees of the scene because then each one will capture 90 degrees and we should get the full 360. Fine. Camera 2. Medianne saying the function play with verts test is undefined when starting. Well, that's weird. Oh, shit. Okay, that's not good. That's really interesting. I swore I... God damn it. I'll obviously cock that up. Um... Well, I'm going to have to restore some files. I'm pretty sharpish. 
Ah, oh, I thought they, that wasn't being used anywhere. When I did a, um... Okay. Yep, that does say exactly where it's being used. Okay, so I'm full of shit in this case. Let's have a look at Sphere. Is Sphere being used anywhere? Yeah, it's used in Make Ball. Oh, well, that's just great. So I must have removed this and left the session going. Because um, I was really paranoid about coming on this stream and things just being broken on startup. So I've gone and fucked up some stuff. Okay, right. So where would that have been? So let's go and have a look for it now. Um, well, it's not going to be that commit, is it? So let's jump back and strip the project down. Here we go. So in here somewhere is defund test. Um, one assumes there's defund test. Unless it's in one of the files that was... Ah, it's in Foo. That was the one that had the stuff in it. Okay. That is very interesting. Alright, so let's just bring this back from the dead, seeing as... Turns out we actually did need Foo in here. So... Let's do that. TB data is defined somewhere else. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to need that here. So I have to define it there and I'll go into assets where I think it's also defined and remove it and then go back to the ASG and then we'll add foo back where it's meant to be and then hopefully you'll be able to build. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm not going to just, I'm, I'm going to leave you to test it right now uh, because I, if this is broken I want the stream to keep going and so I can fix it later. Um, so let's stage this. Let's stage this. Resurrect. Foo! Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah. You just told me it was in Foo Lisp. Um, bug, num uh, bug number 13. I'm assuming the G suffix was for GPU code. Yeah, pretty much. It's not 100% consistent, um, but it's... Yeah, it's used... A lot like that. Okay. Oh no, shit. Oh god, here we go. Damn it, people playing along at home. You awesome fellows, you. Right, so... Right, now we're back to work. Okay, let's assume that's all right. And where were we? We were making a function called foo. Here we are, down here. So yes, we were looking at camera, weren't we? And how to... We made ourselves a new camera that we're going to use when we're rendering the scene in all the cardinal directions. Um, I don't know how we control it, so... Okay, so it's got a position and a rotation. Um, so yeah, we just need to set the rotation. Uh, yeah, okay, right. So we're going to set f camera 2. We're going to set f its position. Let's just make sure that is correct. And we've got the current creature we can get the position of that as well nice so position of camera 2 is going to be the position of the current creature and this can only happen when current creature is not nil so that's that um, we're then gonna do a similar thing the rotation of camera 2 is going to be based on something in fact we only need to set the position once we're going to need to set the rotation a number of times so we are going to get ourselves a loop. So loop for i low 6 do. Um, yes, rotation. So we're going to set, ah, set the rotation to be um, rather than calculating it a bunch of times, we'll just calculate it once. And then we'll do that. So we now need some rotations. Let's stick them out in the 
comparable here. So def var um, potions. And this is going to be make array of dimension six with initial contents being loop for i below. Oh no, actually, we'll just do a list. Um, so we're going to make a quaternion. What functions do we have for doing that? From, from fixed angles, from axis angle, from from direction really is what we want. So up is zero one zero, and the direction is. Um, well, the first one is going to be the same. Actually, let's go through this systematically. Is that correct? Okay, so we've got one pointing in the x-axis, one in the other direction in the x-axis, up, down, deep, and toward. Okay, right, so that's fine. Let's try this. Oh, let's do def parameter just in case I cock something up because we'll need to do it again and again. Rotations. There's our array. Hopefully that works. I feel so rusty at all this. It's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. Uh, bug number 13 saying, I'm wondering how the garbage collector cl manages this. It doesn't and it shouldn't. Um, garbage collector has no knowledge of what the GPU is doing, and so it shouldn't be trying to free the resources. If you're trying to do anything with any kind of performance and it tries to free something, you can cause a stall in the pipeline and you just throw away frames Like at that point. Like it's... Um, yeah, so that's manual manual frame of most of these resources, which is unfortunately the correct way to do this. Um, so it's basically all compiled down to C like code. No, uh, the language it's like common lisp. This implementation of common lisp compiles down to machine code. So if you take a given function, um, like where am I? I'm on the wrong machine here. And Metian, I, I've seen your errors. I will get there. Uh, this uh, can't spell disassemble. Um, we have lambda of x and y, and you add x and y together. Um, you can get at the machine code that was generated for this thing. Um, it depends on implementation of what it actually compiles down to. So things like ECL uh, will compile down to C. Um, things like ABCL compile down to Java bytecode. You know, that kind of story. Um... <sighs> the value. Okay, the, it's the value, and it's showing a uh, vec two is not of simple array single float three. But yes, vec two is not a vec three. That's for sure. Um, sorry, yeah, uh, Median, I'm not sure where that is. Oh, that's in yeah I'm not actually sure maybe yeah, what's going on there I probably don't want to um, dive into that just yet to be honest and I'm sorry that means you can't follow along uh, on your machine but yeah I want to see if we can get a little further on this and I'll try and resurrect that a bit later if we make some progress um, Yeah, this is SBCL. Thanks, man. All right, so where did we where did we get to? We've got some rotations. Hopefully, they're vaguely correct. We're going to point the camera in those different directions. 
Um, and then we're going to render into, we're going to get with FBO bound. Oh, actually, while we're doing this, um, so for I below six, let's just, seeing as it's in a list right now, we could go and change that, of course. We might go and change that because it kind of pisses me off that it's. Anyway, um, FBO in, and we're going to be passing a. What are we going to pass in here? A line of sight scene. We're going to get the FBOs from the scene. Let's put this down here, actually. Oops. The FBO and FBOs. Okay, so that, that, that we know there's six of them, so we're just going to iterate over it at the same time as we're iterating over uh, this. The only reason I'm doing this is because, because it's a list at the moment. I don't want to be indexing into a linked list. Every iteration, it just seems dumb. And I can't not think about that, which is stupid as well. It's a list of length six. It's really not going to matter for this stupid example. But anyway, let's have a look. Where are we? So we set the rotation. And then with the FBO that we've just pulled out, we're going to clear that FBO. And then we're going to draw all of the things into it. So we're just going to render this, but we're going to render it in all these different directions. We're not using the current camera. We are using um, camera two. In fact, let's just pass in the camera. Um, as well, I kind of prefer that. Because then we could technically put the camera with the scene object as well which we might do. Okay, so camera, 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 camera. And there is a delta value. Oh, that's from the update. Well, we don't need to update everything again. All we want to do is um, draw it. So that will be fine. Okay. Draw to line of sight scene. All right. And then let's just see what happens if we call this. So we're going to... Oh, have we got a scene yet? I don't think we have. Oh, yes, we do. Here it is. Nil. Okay. So we need to set that up. So we'll need to set it on reset like so many other things. Um, let's just do that. Here, I guess. Set a line of sight scene into make line of sight scene. Um, yep. Cool. And let's run that over here so it's set up. So now line of sight scene is populated. What? <laughs> that is different from this. But that's the result of this. Set f returns whatever this was. And now the contents... Oh, now I'm just confused. Don't do that. That's really weird. What the fuck? Oh, wait. Is this happening? This isn't happening often, is it? No. These are the only two places as mentioned. What the fuck? Oops. Mmm, spoopy. Okay. No. Oh, wait, it's... Yeah, moving garbage collector. It's probably pushed it around somewhere. Maybe. Not entirely enamored by that, but okay. So let's try draw to... Lost scene. Lost scene with camera, uh, camera two. 
The value 90 is not a single float. 90, that sounds like our um, field of view that we shoved in there. And it's dumb that it didn't handle that for us, but I suppose that's why we don't have, we don't normally use any args on the cameras. We use probably a function. Oh God, okay. Right, let's go fix that. Uh, camera dynamic typing. There we go. Continue. Okay, so apparently it drew. Um, do we know? No. So let's go and try and find out what it's done. So, if we take the line of sight scene and we get the, we don't actually have any accessors for this yet, so we'll just use slot value um, sampler. And that's not how you use that. So let's try that again. Um, there we go. That is still running, good. I just wanted to check. So we get the sampler, and then Nineveh has this handy function that we've been using quite a lot for drawing textures. Um, I think it handles cube maps as well. So let's just try that. Let's take this line and shove it down here. Ah, uh, <laughs> look at that, nice, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see if I can shove this up here so you can see what we've got here. There's our scene from the inside of the sphere. I'm guessing this blob down here is the, um, is this uh, vase type thing. Can't remember what it's called. And then we've got the rest of the scene. That's pretty neat. That's a good start. Um, so now we want to treat this stuff slightly differently. Uh, we want to render all of the scenery as black, and then we want to draw all of the other creatures with a color. Um, let's go and see what's been going on in chat, though. Jace, you're right. Yeah, we could just use equal to find out what's going on there. And yeah, it probably is just getting moved. Um... Yeah, it's, it's settled down now, so this is kind of dumb, but um, nah, it, it just got moved. It's fine. Let's let's not fuck around with that right now. I'm just, it's funny. It's, it's really dumb, actually. I've been doing this a long time, and I just haven't seen that happen on one of our streams yet. Kind of odd. But anyway, yeah, we've got this. Um, Darius is AFK for a bit. Yeah, great to have you back as well. This is it's really nice just chilling again with all this stuff. See you in a bit. Okay. Now, um, so let's go back to our draw for lost scene here. Um, we can either modify this draw function or just make a different one. I think I'm just going to do um, new draw functions for each of these. So let's just do, let's just copy this and we'll just call it lost draw. Not like that, we won't. Lost draw. Lost draw. Okay. So now we should be able to go back to play with verts and we should be able to change this to lost draw and everything keeps working. And I assume it's still working, but uh, let's just do CLS to make sure. Yep, everything flickered and still there, so it's still drawing. Um, all that does is clears, it clears, the, it clears the screen and then swaps the buffers and then clears the screen again. So it's just a pretty, pretty sure that after that, you're not gonna see anything if the render loop has stopped. Um, Chase is saying I think you're doing rendering on the REPL thread so you fill the nursery fast okay so stuff that you do keep a reference to is moved to the higher generations quickly oh of course yeah that's a really good point yeah generation stuff funny Right, so now we need a slightly different way of drawing this stuff because we're not going to be drawing textures and things. We're going to be drawing um, IDs. So 
So let's go and look at how we render stuff at the moment. Let's bring the REPL up here. So we have this big old frag shader. And this is a um, fragment stage. And this is not what we're going to need at all um, in our new one. So we're just going to cut this. And what, what we're going to do instead is we're going to pass in an ID, um, which is a uint8. And we don't need anything else. And what else do we need? We don't need UVs. We don't need TBN. Um, we don't need the world position, I wouldn't think, either. No, because that's used for lighting. And the normal, we don't need the normal either. So we actually don't need any data to be passed over. The only thing we need is the uniform. And we are just going to... Ah, that's going to be interesting. Yes, so at the moment we've got the... We call prep final color, which is this function down here that does our tone mapping, which also takes care of our um, gamma correction stuff. And puts... Um, the calculates the luma using this function and then puts that in the um, alpha channel and the reason we do that is because we're using um, is it ffx for um, anti-aliasing I can't actually remember what it's called um, no FXAA, FFX, what the hell am I thinking of? Yeah, so we're using FXAA, which is um, defined in Nineveh, and it expects, that um, algorithm just expects you to have put the Luma in that channel. Okay, so we get back here, and so this is going to be um, the loss frag stage. Um, let's actually move it down here. So yes, we definitely don't want any of this. All we're going to want to do is go ID 000. zero, zero. Um, we'll do one, actually. Just so we can differentiate it from um, a pixel that's been cleared very easily. If the ID was somehow... No, if it hasn't got written, it hasn't got written. Fuck it, doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, so that's, our, that's going to be our fragment stage. So now we need a vertex stage to match up for this. Um, we have two different vertex stages that are um, because the um, because asset and uh, our other objects, these things, um, have a different uh, data format, data layout. So and uh, the, because they're very similar, other than from unpacking. Um, most of it's factored out into this function here, this vertex stage common. So this is just another GPU function that calculates all the things that are needed for the next stage. We will take this stuff and we are going to have to thoroughly change it. Where's common? There it is. What the heck did I just do? Oh, I jumped. It's on screen, never mind. Okay, let's take common. Let's put this here. We're going to call it loss. Loss common. Um, a lot of this we're not going to need. We definitely don't need to be passing along um, the tangent by tangent normal matrix stuff, which means we don't need any of this. Um, which we don't need tangent by tangent. We definitely don't need normals. Uh, we do need the scale. We don't need the UVs. Um, in fact, the only thing that we need to produce from here is clip pass, um, because nothing else is passed over to the next stage. So, I think that's it. I think it's just this. So we'll go and correct, change this to lost common. We'll change this to lost common. Um, position, scale, none of that, and then the matrices. Yeah, that's good. Um, position, scale, none of this. And the matrices, sure. In fact, let's go put this down the other line. 
Okay, so loss common. Whoa, what? Okay, symbol normal is undefined. Yes, that is correct. Um, let's abort for a second and get back to where we were. Oh yeah, we don't need the world normal at all. So let's get rid of that too. Can we compile this now? Yes, good. So let's just have a look what's going on. FXAA kid, yes, absolutely right. Median saying, can you push now with the red cross? Sure, man, I can do that. Um, lost scene created. Um, showing Q map. Something like that. It's probably in a pretty awkward state to start the project right now. Um, because I'm expecting that something hasn't been initialized properly when you just do run. We'll clean that up at the end of the stream for sure. Okay, so, dun dun dun, lost common, thing vert stage, asymvert vert stage. That should be it, I think. Nope. Oh, fuck, wait a second. Um, let's go back here. And the reason is we haven't changed the name. Um, Actually, we could just call these loss vert stage and loss vert stage. I think that should work because you've got um, overloading and stuff. That one's fine. That one's fine. We'll go and recompile these stages up here because they're now incorrect. So basically, this error is just telling us that, hey, the outputs from our modified version down there don't match the inputs of the fragment stage. So you done fucked up. So we say continue and everything's still fine and it's still rendering. Hooray! And we've got lost frag stage here, which is already complaining. Um, oh yes, because it needs to be a float. So this is just going to be divided by uh, 255 to normalize. Where is it? Which way is the normalized version? Um, yeah, something like that. Okay. What? In defining the function, we found some we didn't recognize. UN oh, yeah, of course, because GLSL doesn't have UN8 as a type. Um, I can't, what do we pass that up as? I suppose we could just do this, this divide on the clients, on the uh, CPU side and pass it up as a float. We'll do that. We still going? Yes, we are, good. So that's fine. And now we're gonna define a pipeline. So def pipeline G, this is the loss pipeline. It uses, um, oh, the loss thing pipeline. Um, this uses the loss vert stage that takes see so yeah the, the only problem with this na naming is just remembering which way round things are um, so it takes a g gpnt which is just destruct the tb data struct from one of our other files and that is that um, and then it takes the loss frag stage and there are no arguments other than uniform, so that should be okay. Ascent pipeline, and we do this, and we're taking just an ascent mesh. Cool. All right, so those should be pipelines that we can use to render. Um, for now, I'm just going to very briefly set this to be 1, because then we'll get red for everything that's drawn. Um, yeah, we'll see if that works. We get, should get some areas that aren't red in the result. Like up here, this should be the sky, which is clear color. Um, 
Ah, we'll need to make sure that we clear cut. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. The clear color will need to be zero. Let's, we'll set that in a minute. Okay, so we've got this, we've got our pipelines. Let's go back to play with verts. No, let's go to things. That's where we have lost draw. Um, the lost thing pipeline. We're passing in model the world, world of view, view to clip. We're not passing in albedo, we're not passing in now. Um, we're not passing in lights, we're not passing in a normal map, we're not passing, yes we are passing in a scale, we don't need mult. I don't think the other one needs mult either, but that's all right. Um, does that work? It does for now. And then let's go down to lost draw down here. That just confuses me. Um, that should be fine. Let's let's try that. Yeah, hopefully that'll be fine. We'll see soon enough. So let's just recompile this, just to be sure. Save this, bring up here, and let's try our draw into lost scene again and see what happens. Oh, okay. Well, that's not bad. We can see that most of it's red, which makes sense because there's geometry most places other than up here. Now, if we... It's going to be a lot easier to see if I do this. Let's go play with that. Draw text. Here we are. Get rid of that. If we come down here... Do, do, do. And look up. We've got this pole. This is obstructing some of our view, and then we get the sky. And if we bring back in our um, draw text, which was here, we can see red everywhere except here we have a little bit of sky. I'm guessing this is the curtain, and these little sticks here are going to be those ones that are sticking out. So this looks very promising so far. Um, and it's 9 o'clock, so we're one hour in. Well, it's 9.07. We're going okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Median's typing shell commands into our chat, which is excellent. Kids saying there's so much going on, I don't know how you keep track of it all. Again, it's I, I'm sorry that this is uh, like the presentation's probably pretty bad. Um, yeah, I, the thing is, like we've used, we've slowly been growing this little monstrosity of a project for so long, so many episodes. I'm kind of used to it. It's been a month or so, but oh yeah, how long has that been? December, whenever that was. Yeah, a while. Um, Median saying just as oh yeah they commit just as a waypoint because that cube map is, view is really useful it's great it took a little fiddling to get right but it's super handy um, and it adapts to whatever size your viewport is so if we swap it out over here we can see a bit clearer what's what's going on down here the back doesn't though because those are different FPS. right so what now um Hopefully, we're rendering to scene. Um, we need another... Well, now now we need to start passing in the ID, don't we? So if we do this and we do this, this is all going to go the same. Ooh. Why did it... Why is the sky red? Well, now I'm just confused. What the fuck? Okay. This is black, which in itself is strange because the sky is gray, so I would have expected this to be the clear color. <sighs> okay, not sure about that yet. I mean, temporarily, I'm just going to shove the, I'm going to reset the clear color at the beginning of the project. So I'm just going to set this to zero, zero, zero. I'll just paste it down here. Now, hopefully, then, when we look up at the sky, it's completely black, which is good. That's what we want. Um, okay, so now when we draw that... Oh, of course, it's red because there's only one channel. Yeah, there is only the red channel, so we were getting the red component of that grey. Well, that makes sense.
Okay, so now everything's cleared. We're drawing all, well, we're drawing everything, uh, but we're not passing in an ID, so it's defaulting to zero, one would assume. Um, but let's actually pass that in. Things, and then when we're drawing in asymp things, which are all the scenery, we'll just say ID is zero. And that's fine. But now, for all of the other things, we want them to have their own ID. So we're going to go def bar creature ID. This is super hacky, but it'll do. Um, and then each of the balls is going to have an ID, which is init form, um, increment, creature ID, done. Um, and so now if we go to the inspector and look at all of the things, and we go to the ball here, we should see it has an ID of 1. That's great. We want it to be greater than 0 because we're using 0 for the scenery. Um, so that is cool. Right, what now? Um, when we're... Where's that lost draw thing? When we're doing this, we don't want to pass up the ID. Well, this one we can just send a zero. That's fine. Lost draw for the other things. ID is going to be slot value of thing ID divided by 255. Yeah. Okay, so now we need another creature. Um, so let's go and call make ball again, I guess. Make ball. And we'll put it at 30, so it's straight above. I hate it when it does that with the colors. It's really dumb. And we'll make it bigger, so it's 5. Right, and then so that one is here. So now when we draw to lost scene... One would hope that it's in there, but we don't actually know. So, uh, what should we do about that? Well, to test, we could multiply this by a large number. Let's just like multiply this by um, like 10 or something. Because it's going to be coming in, it's going to be 0.1. Yeah. That's starting to look like shape. Let's up the up that number a hundred times. There is a very bright thing right there. I'm guessing. That's, I'm surprised it's actually. Oh, I actually have just thought of a problem. Fucking me! It's hard to get my bearings of where the hell I am. Ah! All right, I'm coming over here. I'm gonna write myself again. Okay, so I think we have an issue, and I'm going to just swap things over so you can see. Down here, there's this lovely start of a circle here, but then it looks like the curtain's in front of it. There's something obstructing the ball and something obstructing here, and that's rather strange because let's, if I could actually show you, <laughs> play with verts, uh, draw text. Um, if we go and have a look around here, oh, where the hell am I? Oh, there it is. There isn't anything that should be obstructing the view between here and here, right? The curtain definitely shouldn't be. And it almost looks like this or part of the balcony or something is obstructing, maybe some, but this overhang is obstructing the ball. The only way that could happen is if we didn't have depth. And so it's rendering... Like, it's rendering essentially in order. Whatever the order the GPU ends up doing these uh, meshes at, that's what, how it's happening. That sounds very likely because if we go to our um, scene definition, where the hell's that? Up here somewhere. Lost scene. When we made our FBOs, we said make FBO and we gave it one attachment. We didn't put a depth attachment in there. So, if we do this... And then we go um, setf 
loss scene is make loss scene. Oh dear, didn't like that. Okay, whilst making FBO, we saw that one of the attachments uh, will end up having different dimensions. Okay, so it's saying that one of the attachments is 512 by 512 and the other one's 438 by 748, which is the dimensions of this. That actually makes sense. Um, while this is not an error according to GL, it can trip people up because according to the spec, if the attachment sizes are not all identical, rendering will be limited to the largest area that can fit in all of the attachments, the intersection of rectangles having a, uh, the lower left. Yeah, okay. So, so basically it's unlikely that this is what you want. Um, and you can set matching dimensions to nil if you want that behavior. We don't want that behavior, so I'm actually really glad it caught me there. Um, hooray for past me fucking things up and then building something to fix that. Um, so I will abort and we'll come back here and where do I have to fix? It'll be in play with verts where we just added that D. There it is. No, it's not. Where are you? There it is, D. We need to make sure it's the same dimensions as everything else, um, which means it needs to be the same dimensions as this. And we know that that cube map is 512 by 512. So we should be able to just go in here and go list dimensions 512 by 512. Not beautiful, but not terrible either. Um, do that. Okay, that now compiled. Um, let's go and get our draw text back in play so we can see what's going on. Why can I not see what's going on? Oh yeah, because we've never drawn to it. Okay, so now we'll draw to that. And fuck you, why am I still not seeing it? That's annoying. Hmm. Oh, somewhere along the line it stopped playing, that's why. Good, okay, well that's slightly annoying that we didn't get the, uh, the climax at the right time, but we can see now that we see black everywhere except right here, which must be directly above this one, we see a perfect circle. So it was the depth that was causing us the problem. Um, bug number seven saying, "How much memory does this game? How much memory does this game use?" Well, the game isn't written in Lisp, but that's a Unity project, and I don't know what the RAM requirements are off the top of my head. Um, because we're still in the alpha, most things are not optimized properly yet. Anyway, we're kind of just making, trying to find the right um, experience, like user experience, building experience, like gameplay experience stuff. And when we think we've got all those systems kind of stable enough for our initial release, um, or at least behaving in a way that's pleasant enough that we'd be happy to have a, a paid release, then we'll sit down and start honing other things. But yeah, at current stage, it eats way too much of everything. So um, I don't know. But you can sign up for the alpha if you want to get access. Um, there is a queue because there was a few thousand people that signed up, which was great. And we've only let in about 750 so far. Okay, so this looks like it might be working, which is cool. Let's put another one of these guys in the scene. Um, so instead of putting it higher, let's just put it at 20, and then we'll stick it like minus 10. I really don't like how that is doing that. Minus 10. If anyone knows why this sometimes loses color in the slime ripple. I'd love to know. Okay, so that's the second one there. So then if we draw to the scene, yes, nice. Now we can see that we've got two of them drawing in here. The only issue with right now is obviously they're both kind of just really red. They will both have separate IDs. Um, so we should actually go and correct that now. So back in render, we should remove this little hack here. And we can just trust now that they do seem to be rendering into this. Even though right now they're rendered there, they're just very, very dark. And because we can't see much here anymore, let's just remove this. How much time have we got? Oh, we're almost at 20 past. Bloody, oh yeah, wrong one. 
Um, so we need to speed up some things. So let's uh, start looking at accumulating the results. So we're going to need an SSBO, uh, which means we're going to need a struct to describe that SSBO. Um, uh, what are we, what's it going to be? Um, so loss results. Um, we're going to have an array, um, which is going to be, so loss results, just call it data. Um, and the data is going to be an array of 255. Um, ooh, that's a good point, actually. I guess we just make them floats. Um, OK, so now we've defined that. We can move this to the top of the file, and we'll just shut it here for now. It'll be fine there. And then we're going to do a def uh, loss results. In fact, really, these results should be in here, shouldn't they? Actually, this should just be called SSPO, because that's really what it is. Um, and then in here, we would have to set this. So SSPO would be, let's just see how we do this, make SSBO. Uh, there's no data to begin with, but the element type is of um, loss results. Okay, so then we get an SSBO with one thing in it, um, and that thing is defined by this type. So we're going to have an array of 255 things in there. That should be fine. Um, that sounds promising, so I'm going to stick it in here. SSBO hasn't been defined. It's one of the slots. Now it should be okay. Um, so let's go set f slot value and I will jump back to the chat in just a second. Um, loss scene SSBO. There we go. Okay, so now uh, go on then. Um, loss scene now has an SSBO in it as well of its own. Good! So now we need to do um, an accumulation um, pass. So how are we going to do that? Um, let's just see what's going on. Why do you use def file so much and not def parameter? Yes. Yeah, so like Jace says, every time I uh, do control C, control K, I'm recompiling the whole file. And in that case, I would reinitialize, reset the values in there. And if that's something that's, say, like a texture, I might not want to set that back to nil. Um, yeah, so that's that's the that's the idea. Def parameters is super handy, though, for the other cases. Um, but yeah, I auto autopilot to def var now, which is often annoying. Okay, so caffeined up. Let's do the next thing. Um, so our vertex stage is just going to be, um, what am I doing? I don't need to copy this. It's just going to be a quad, a full screen quad. So we'll do defund g um, loss accum vert stage. Um, and it's going to be a vec2. That's all we need. Um, the results are going to be So it's going to be from minus one to one, I guess. Um, yeah, so in fact, we should just be able to pass vert as is, I think. No, of course not. We need to change it to be a vec4. OK, then defund g, loss accume frag stage, is going to take no data in, but we are going to have a uniform. And the uniform that we're going to pass in is our SSBO, um, which is our results. And it's of type uh, loss results, and it's an SSBO. And I'm really running out of line space here. I'm going to kick this down to a new line. Not pretty, but it works. Um, and it will be standard 430. This is just talking about layout. That's a good point. There, that just reminds me of something. There's something I need to do about layout on the struct. Uh, one second, let me just go and look up some code to see how this is done. 
Um, Keffel.tests, tests, SSBOs, there we go. Okay, so yes, when you define the struct, you have to specify the layout, okay. Um, that means I'm gonna need to recreate that. Ah, oh, so many things to think of. This layout is really important. These, these are standardized by uh, GL and they have a different layout of, um, yeah, it has a different data layout than C does, um, especially when it comes to vector threes and things like this. So now I need to do that again. Cool. So I did do that right, didn't I? Yes, yes, and let's carry on because we're running out of time. Um, let's go to render again. We're passing in the results. And then for every, if this was just a regular quad, uh, we need the frag chords. Let's have a look at that. Uh, GL frag chord, I think. Oh, there's a, oh, what is it? I had a shortcut for this a long time ago. Emacs lisp. Um, Control C, Control V, Control V. Okay, that's my how to get the documentation for GL stuff. C V V. There we go. GL frag chord. Oh blimey. Uh, contains the window relative coordinates of the current fragment. It's a vec four. Okay. By default, GL frag chord assumes that the lower left origin assumes a lower left origin for window coordinates and assumes pixel centers are located at half pixel centers. Okay. Um, right, that's fine. So yeah, but it is in it's in window space, so it should be five twelve by five twelve if I remember correctly. <laughs> right, so let's just go. Let pos is, and we're going to swizzle out the first two parts of this, so X and Y. Let's do let's star. So we're probably gonna do more here. Okay, so what do we need to do in this? We need to look into the, um, uh, yeah, the uh, cube map. I swear I had some function for doing this. I might even have it in Nineveh. That would be really handy uh, because I, I want to, I want the sampling position. Yeah, I need to sample. I want to sample all six faces at once. So if this is at coordinate zero, zero, I want to sample zero, zero from every single face. And then we'll just do an all to see if any of them are populated. Um, well, no, actually we won't do an all. We'll just take their IDs and set them. We'll see that in a minute. Let's go and um, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up, we're gonna have some magic here and then we're gonna end up with an ID. Um, which is actually going to be, yeah, that's going to be an ID, which is going to be a float. Is it? Yes, it is going to be a float. Um, so then we're going to have to make it into an index, which is times the ID by 255. Um, and we're also going to make it an int at that point. And then when we've done that, um, we can use it to a ref into our, so we're going to have results. And this, can, we can use with slots data on results to get the array, and then we can aref into data um, using our index, and then we're going to go set f this is true. No. What did we actually set that to be? Oh, it was a float, wasn't it? So we set it to one. I'm not sure why we did that. We could have just set it to be booleans, but whatever. That'll do. Um, Why is that behaving strangely? It's behaving like it's not a credit. Oh, okay, because I've got something open down there. Um, yeah, we're only using this for its side effects, so we're just going to omit whatever color down here. All right, what are we doing for time? 2.29, half an hour, nice. Um, 
Many analysts saying the land it's, the layout standard 430 means it's only from GL43 and up. Um, or what does it refer to? No, it's um, it does have that result. Yes, uh, Enfiano is explaining as well. It's the packing scheme for laying out the data for SSBOs. You can use standard 140 for UBOs, but SSBOs uh, support both. So yeah, there's a, there's a few different data layouts that are available. Standard 140 is very annoying. It's got some. It makes some things way bigger than they need to be. Um, standard 430 is slightly better. You have to use that for. Uh, well, yeah. It's uh. Yes, they were they were added in 4.3. Although the yeah, 430 was added in 4.3. Words. Okay, so let's see where are we. We need to get that thing. Um, I need to go and look at Nineveh because I didn't write any documentation for it ever. Which is very stupid, but let's look at textures. Cube text FBOs. Um, this is all about generating make FBOs for each mip map of cube texture. Nice. Cube faces. Alright, yeah, that gets all the faces of a cube texture. Nice, it's pretty cool. Um, sampling, here we go. UV to cube map directions. Oh, that's kind of cute. Maybe, maybe this is a good idea. So what this does is it takes a UV between obviously zero and one in both dimensions and gives you the direction to sample the cube map. Now, if we assume that yeah, we've got our 512 by 512. Yeah, this could work actually. This will return six values. And these are the directions to sample the texture from. Okay, we're gonna do this. Gonna do this. This is gonna be funny. Okay, so, or at least it's gonna be weird looking code. So, um, we're going to go with multiple value bind. Um, D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. Right, so those are the directions. We're going to pass in UV, which now means this needs to take UV, um, which is a vec2, which means we need to calculate that. Um, and we're going to calculate that here, which is values, um, which is times. So the vert multiplied, because the value that's coming in here is going to be between minus one and one in both directions. We need to half the range, so we do it by that, and then we are going to minus 0 0.5, and that's gonna bring it into the range zero to one. No, plus 0 0.5, sorry. So yeah, halving it will take it to minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and then adding 0 0.5 makes it zero to one. So that should be that. Um, this data then gets passed into here. We then, change it and take those UVs and turn them into sampling directions. Um, ID zero is going to now be, um, we do texture, which is how we sample. Um, we take the, oh wait, the other thing we're gonna need is the actual cube map. Um, cube map is sampler cube map. Yeah, it's probably it, isn't it? Oh no, it's just sample a cube. Nice, cool, that's it. So we're gonna sample D0. The reason we're doing all six faces at once is obviously just to save, um, yeah, <laughs> save time. Otherwise we'd have to do, we're already doing six passes earlier on to render into the cube map texture. And I don't wanna do another six, so I'd rather do all of this in one go. So we get all of the directions into the different faces. We sample all of them to get the various IDs. Um, index zero is ID zero. Um, so let's just do, yeah. Oh, come on. Four, five, six. This is not gonna make anything faster, Chris. Just copy paste it 
That's too many as well, I think. One, two, three, four, five, yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, so that should now be our index, and then we just set this. One, two. Index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four, index five. Okay, so that should work. So it looks up in a single point in each of the uh, faces. It grabs that data, it multiplies it by 255 to turn it from a float into an index. Um, we then use that index to look up into the array and we set it to one. Now it doesn't matter if this is done by two instances at the same time, even though it's we're not having to, we don't need to do it atomically, basically. Um, there shouldn't be a clash any, um, no, there could be plenty of clashes because if you have a lot of pixels in the cube map right next to each other are going to be of the same ID. The fragment shader is going to be running tons of versions of the shader at the same time. So they're all going to try and write into the same index at once. But I think it's safe to not have to do with this atomically because we're always setting to the same result. Um, and so something should always succeed. We're always trying to write it to the same bits. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's okay. Um, results da -da -da -da, is badly formed. It should be var name var type. There we go. Um, let's abort that. Oh, it's still badly formed. Boo! What is it? I don't know how to use my own code. Um, results. Oh, wait a second. I'm an idiot. I've got one too many nestings here. And then it's complaining about something else. GL frag cord is undefined. Um, oh, okay, so it, no. So what happens here is because a, a Keppel knows that a GPU function could be used for any stage, it tests against all of them. So it's saying, hey, um, for the fragment, if this is a fragment stage, then D0 is undefined because I didn't wrap this around there. Uh, but otherwise, all these other ones fail because it doesn't know what GL frag cord is because that's only in, fra in fragment shaders. Blah, words. Come on, let's go. Ah, uh, right. You can't give int a vector 4. Assignment failed with... Oh, you're shitting me. What? That should not be read only. God damn it. Okay. Um, that sounds like a bug in Vario, to be honest. Because this is an SSBO. Damn it. Right. Okay. Fine. Um, how do we lie to this then? We should be able to go let data is results. What is it? Uh, loss results data for results. Hopefully this part of the code doesn't have the same problem. Otherwise, I don't know how to fix this in time for the rest of the stream. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Let me just go back and test things again. Good. So that's correct. We need to write that down as a bug. Um, so with slots results in... Um, Yeah, Vario thinking that that was uh, read-only. Okay, can't think about that now because we don't have much time left. We've got 20 minutes. Um... <laughs> got more discussions of the 4.3 name going on. And yes, it's not a great name. Okay, so let's define pipeline again. So def pipeline g loss accumulates... Um, the vertex stage is loss accum vert stage, and it takes a vector 2. And then we have loss. That's wrong. I'm actually amazed it let me do that, but okay. That's probably a bug in itself. Um, can you pass textures from stage to stage um, using outs? 
I thought it had to be done by uniforms. I might be wrong though. The system is quite possibly smarter about this stuff than I am. Definitely has a better memory. Okay, so then we get our pipeline. That's great. So, what do we do now? Um, play with Earths. We go here. Draw to lost scene. And now we're going to just um, defund accume loss results. Lost scene. And then we're going to go. Oh dear. Um, we don't need to draw anything, I guess. Ah, screw it. Let's just let's just map G over it for now, and we'll see what happens. So map G uh, loss uh, accumulate. Um, we need a um, a quad. We can use Nineveh has a thing for that, so we get get quad or something like quad stream V two. Yeah, that'll work. And then we have some uniforms to pass in. We have results. Um, which is going to be SSBO and with slots SSBO from loss scene. Come on now. And we need to pass in the cube map as well. Cube map. Um, and I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's just called cube map. Fine. You. Okay, so hopefully that would just um, that'll work. What then? What then? Then we have to get the results back. So what we really need to do is wait for the results to definitely be written in, and we use a GPU fence for that, and I can't remember how. But luckily, I can copy some code from when I did the works. Kettle.examples, examples, SSBOs? No. Um, I definitely did it for transform feedback. Um, Or I thought I did. Did I just I just say fuck it and pull? With GPU query bound. Query. What's the query? Oh that's the transform feedback's primitive query. Nope. Let's just grep for fence and see what we have in here. Compute. Okay, so the compute example is using a fence. That's good. So we make a fence. Um, yeah, we fire off a fence immediately after we've run the thing, and then we wait for the fence, and then we free the fence, and then we pull the data. That would be really cool. I wonder if that works. Yes. Um, so. Da -da 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 -da. Make a fence, wait on the fence, free the fence, and then pull the SSBO. SSBO data? Oh, is that a thing? Returns the GPU array that contains the data presented by this SSBO. Well, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Um, and we have the very rare unbalanced parens error. Okay, and now we're going to do defun um, loss pass. And it's going to take a loss scene and a camera. And it's going to go draw to loss scene, loss scene camera, cume, loss results, loss scene. Who fucking knows? <laughs> this might even work. Um, this is still running, which is quite nice. 
Um, and let's see what happens. One thing we do need to definitely do though is we need to clear that array before we start writing to it. Uh, we'll do that in a shitty way for now, just for the sake of time. Um, yeah, okay, so when we make, how are we gonna do that? Let's just bring up the REPL, put that over here. We'll get our loss scene again. Um, we get the slot value for the loss scene. It's the SSBO that we're interested in. We're going to do pull G on that. Um, so yeah, we get an, a nested list containing 255 floats. I don't know why floats. We should have just made them. Uh, we should have just made the billions, but whatever. Um, so we should push G. We should push to that and we should push some empty data. Let's just make a um, verify empty results. God damn it, we're so close. Make array um, dimensions is 255. Um, element type is single float. Um, initial contents. A loop for i hello two five five collect zero zero okay so now we should have empty results we should be able to push empty results to that that's not correct that's why this should be def parameter for sure and it's going to be a list containing this to match up with the structure there we go Cool. So now if we do a pull G on that, we can see that it is in fact zeroed, which is great. So that is clear on the GPU. Um, so we should, for now, we're just going to do this at the start of the loss pass here. Um, loss pass. Loss scene. Damn it. <laughs> that looks empty to me. Shit. Okay. Um, what could we do? What could we do to test this? Um, I'm trying to think. All right. So, Mediante, I feel the it's the final rush now. Totally. Uh, oh, Shin's here. Hey, man. <laughs> Shin says, I "Feel like I'm going to throw it, but it's not because of coder bonds." What are you saying? Is it my face? It is my face. I knew it. Right. Uh, you were playing Portal before and had to use a controller. Ugh. Uh, we are at that point where it's like 10 minutes before the end and things aren't working and I don't know what the fuck to do. Um, so. It's kind of interesting. Um, so we definitely clear the results. And then we make, wait, oh no, well, where are we doing? No, we don't. We definitely clear the results here, selecting the wrong thing. Then we draw to lost scene, where we position the camera correctly. And we know we do this bit, fine. We saw that already, but we could prove that to ourselves just to make sure. Um, let's go and do draw text. Um, that, wait a sec, oh, for fuck's sake, okay, that means, um, that wasn't set, okay, so that wasn't running, anyway, we can do loss pass, and if we go to render, let's go and find the thing where we write the color in, here's the ID, ID times 255 or something, doesn't really matter. Um, lost pass, we can see that there is a thing there. So something is getting drawn in. Um, so the other thing we could check, of course, is that 
um, that ID that we're passing up is same. So let's go and see what IDs are, what the IDs that are being passed up are. Um, so for thing, pipeline, let's go there. Let's print this. Here we go. Do the lost pass again. Huh. That printed a bunch of numbers. A lot more than I expected for lost draw. Wait a second, how many things are there then? Oh no, of course. It's um it's just doing it once for every once for every face. So yeah. One, two, three, four, five, and then this up here just got split up. Okay, so what are these? So these IDs. Appcar, Lambda, X times X255. 321, excellent, good. So those are, that is what we wanted. So we draw each of those spheres. We've passed up these values. So we're writing those into the texture. Um, we're then, and what are we doing? Um, we're then calling accumulate loss results. passing in the scene. So we go here, and then we map over this pipeline, passing in the quad, and hmm. what I'm going to do, rather than printing this out, um, I'm just going to loop or, okay, what is it? Um, do first of this and then loop for x in this. Um, and when x is greater than zero, do print yay. Um, and the reason I want to do this is I'm going to go and put this into the main loop. So it's happening all the time. Um, we'll do it down here. Whoa, shit, okay. Um, it's not. I just did a uh, loop below, didn't I? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, oh, well that went deeper than I thought it did then. I'm kind of ah now I'm just confused. The fuck? I grab the first of that, of course. I just didn't think that that was the layout. Whoa! Wait! Wait! What's what the fuck is going on? <laughs> that. Fuck's sake, I'm so confused. Okay, something else is printing things. That makes way more sense. Oh, of course it is. Yes, it's that um, in things, we've still got the print around here. Good, thank you. Fucking hell. Okay, so as soon as we see a yay up here, we should have won. Um, compile the accumulator. Did I not do that? It's compiled. So what do we do? We've got to check this logic. So we have 
the verdict stage, that's going to be fine. I'd be very surprised if that's wrong. Um, we take the vert data, we change it to a VEC4, we do the UVs, transform, we pass it on. We take the UV, we use this to get the um, UV QMAP directions, which I've used in another project, so I know that that works, or it bloody should work. And from that, we get the various directions that we want to sample. Then we sample the cube map um, based on this. We get the first thing from it, which is going to be the like the, yeah, the red component, the X component, the one we actually wrote to. Um, that's interesting. Is that correct? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, yeah, we, te we tested. We saw things there. We sampled this texture. Um, So we got the X component that, and that gave us our IDs. So then, we turn these into indexes, and then we use that to set data in the SSBO. That should be correct. I'm gonna just pull G the uh, whole pipeline and just see if there's anything really obviously wrong with it. Uh, loss, accumulate. Okay, so. <sighs> We've got an SSBO that is passed in that has data. It's a float 255. Um, We get the data, which is a float 255, and then we write to it. That should be correct, shouldn't it? Uh, where's the bell? What's up, Marianne? But then repeated. What? Um... What's up, Marianne? You wanted the bell. <laughs> oh, is that for the recompiling? Uh, four minutes left to fix everything. Fuck you, kid. I know. Three minutes. Uh, try assigning something to the SSBO. Just see it works at all. You're absolutely right. Let's do that. Um, let us do that. Let's just say setf rf data 0 to 1. Well, fuck you. <laughs> data is unidentified. Yeah, I did it in the wrong scope. That's why. Get out of my way. Okay, so it doesn't work. Is the uh, is this still running? Yes, it is. So for some reason, fuck. Why? Hmm. That's really annoying. So I'm guessing all the texture stuff is actually correct, but the actual the writing for some reason isn't happening. Why would that be? What can this be? Right. Let's assume that it's some horrible delay and that the fence isn't working right, because that's something I don't know very well. Um, let's not clear it each time. And doesn't make any difference. God damn it. Okay. Um, let's not worry about these fences for now. Um, yeah, man. That's really strange. Jace, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that one soon. I, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I'm not looking right now. Um, let's think about it. What did we do? We passed, we passed the damn thing in. There it is. We passed the SSBO in. And I've used... Okay, let me just go replace... I've used SSBOs plenty of times before. 
So let's look in capital tests, 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 SSBOs. Um, here we have 100 ints. And then we make a GPU array with one of these, which has the 100 ints. We pass it in as an SSBO. Oh, that's interesting. We don't have to specify. We only have to specify the layout on the um, struct. That's actually good. Let's just remove that in case something's weird. Um, won't make a difference, but no. Nope. Still running and still no results. Um, Oh, we're so close. This is really infuriating. We make an SSBO with the data. We, oh, that's interesting. I say maybe it's initialized wrong. No, because we've pushed and pulled data from it plenty of times. Um, let's just see that it would, this um, check would work at all, um, just out of interest, because this could be something client side I'm doing dumb. Um, Let's remove the thing that pushes empty results. Uh, let's do this. Um, push that to there. So now when we pull G, that. Holy fucking what? Oh, I guess that is actually being clear. <laughs> I guess that is actually being cleared. Let's just ah. Oh. Yeah, okay. So when we push the value with one in it and we pull it again, it's definitely still there. And that's definitely coming from the GPU array. So it's so that's fine. We can just go check pull G because I'm doubting everything now um, and see that all it does, it copies SSBO to new Lisp data, which is doing a load of fancy crap. But anyway, yeah, it's doing an SSBO data and copying some things down. That's fine. It's not that. It is... The, oh, what the fuck? Oh, so now you're happy. <laughs> yeah, of course, because now I've... Well, that's really interesting, actually. Was this not... Okay. Yep, that kills it again. All right, so this is definitely clearing it, and we are pulling it, and we are iterating over, and this will work if it's not zero. Um, but writing to the SSBO is not working. Let's look at the SSBO's test again. Set if uh, we get the values we do the same kind of thing here we get an, a thing we get the x component we take an, an int we use it as this and we write a value in how dare you okay we're doing this from compute but it should be the same from fragment stages well that's cheeky <sighs> i wonder why I wonder if it's just, ah, oh, that'd be really weird. Ooh, shit. What? How is that coming up all of a sudden? <laughs> How do we break something over there? Okay, right, let's have a quick look. Last chance to get this right. Oh, this is, we're passing the wrong thing as the sampler? <sighs> cube map, texture cube map is not a sampler. Well, that's, that's absolutely correct. That is not a sampler. That's why we have something called sampler. How was that not breaking before now? 
Okay, so the reason it's not working is because we weren't... Oh, fucking hell, what? Loss accumulate. Oh no, okay, of course. This was called cube map. Uh. Fucking hell! It's working! But is it? Is it really working? Let's see. Uh, let's take it out of every... Every run. Let's stop it. Let's do this. Triple check that we are actually clearing it at the beginning, and then we do this and we look at the result. That doesn't help me. I need you to tell me more. Um, at the end of this, return foo. Check it out. A thousand, one, one. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of this. Dude, that is really nick of time right there. So apparently it's seeing all three of them in that shot, which is pretty weird, but sure. Um, let's see. So three things were written in. So if we go to things, uh, we should see three balls. There they are. Um, let's remove... Uh, all of this very last second. Right, we are going to just do this quickly. Um, so this is ID 2, uh, this is ID 3, and this is ID 1. Oh, that's actually good, because um, now I'm confused. <laughs> Why is that good? Tell me again. How is this 1? Unless it's rounding down? Yeah, it's probably a rounding error. Okay. Let's just remove one of these and see if this still happens. It shouldn't do. Um, okay, so... The third ball has an ID of 1. Let's remove that. So let's take this. Let's go set f things to be... to remove that from things. Ah, still getting three IDs there. That's kind of interesting. Now we've only got two balls, but somehow... Hmm. Something's not quite right. Is it because we're not running now? Oh yeah, because we haven't rendered the scene again since... Okay, right. Where are we? I'm in the wrong damn file. No wonder this isn't working. Um, let's turn the last pass back on. And let's go find yay and turn it off, because now we're being inundated with success, and that's just not what I'm after. Okay, for some reason I'm still getting three IDs there. We're not getting any more than that. So it's like all of them are being seen. Hmm. We should be clearing those F FBOs. I'm not sure. I think we're going to have to call it because it's, it's already getting on to 10 minutes past. I think we might finish this up at the start of next week. Or I'll finish it after the stream and then we'll do a recap uh, next week. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, I've got a couple of minutes for any last questions. And... Um, yeah, and that's all. And uh, we'll call it for the day. Um, Jace is saying, aren't you always writing one or did I miss something? Yes, I'm always writing one. I'm using it basically as true or false. So all of these are false and these are saying true. Um, so what we're trying to do is say that... Um, yeah, if, if we see... Oh, wait. Yeah, we don't actually check to see if... Is that right? We don't actually check to... Oh, yeah, so it'll always be writing to zero because all of the scenery is zero. So this will always be one, and then these two will be populated. Let's remove all the balls. Let's just do that. Right. Okay. Um... Oh, fuck. What is it? Um...
move if lambda x type p x four. Yes. Things set f things. Let's do that. Yes, cool. So when we remove the other objects, now we're only getting one here. That's set to true because all of the scenery is um, writing the ID zero. So this is always going to get populated. These two have disappeared because we removed the last two balls from the scene. The other one can't have been in there because it was just out of view. So that is dope. Okay, cool. So that's a success. Um, it's great to be back. It's really cool. Um, we are going to have some more technical uh, type pushing pixels with Lisp uh, episodes. I've got some more game related features that I want to prototype. There's one in particular that's going to be pretty math heavy and is going to take us a couple of weeks, um, but will be. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. It's kind of cool and then we'll get to see it in game. I am almost certainly going to put this in Tailspire and see how it goes. Um, I'd like to do a bit more so we can actually visualize what's happening. That'd be really cool. But we'll do that another time. Groovy, let's just check. Uh, Mfiano's pimping the game jam. Um, I would, I will definitely consider it. I'm not sure what's going to be happening around then. Um, because we've got, this year is, is crazy, obviously, with uh, Kickstarter and all this kind of things coming up later this year. So that will be cool. Uh, we'll, we'll check it out. Um, glad you enjoyed yourself. I certainly did. Um, thanks for all the help, everyone. That was really good. And I'll see you next time. Peace.